Hello again from Norway. It is April the 6th and I think I'm in about the end of the fourth week of uh, either a voluntary quarantine or a full-on lockdown working from home uh, like many of you. So uh, partly to teach myself some new tricks and partly to just find out what was going on I created a little online survey uh, using um, open source Google Forms and and ask some questions about the changes in training that were happening for a couple of different reasons, maybe three. One was just all the competition schedule got wiped out for pretty much all endurance athletes planning for big events like triathlons, uh, uh, World Cup races, uh, Pro Tour cycling events, Spring Classics, you name it. They've all disappeared, big national road races. So that was a big change. And then came the uh, some pretty tough, uh, some would even say draconian measures to that you know we have to do to try to force for, uh, distancing, physical distancing. So no group rides. A lot of training centers are pretty much all of them are closed down. Pools are closed, group runs out of the question, and so forth. So, Physical availability, changes in the competition schedule, changes in motivation. What's the effect? That's the question. Collected this data during the 26th of March to 3rd of April. So for most of Europe, uh, by now, the, these measures had been implemented in the places that they were going to be implemented, which is pretty much everyone. Uh, U.S. lagged a bit behind, but is also happening there as well. First of all, uh, 1,078 responses, mostly men. That's partly just due to uh, me as a, as a Twitter sports scientist. Uh, my followers tend to be men, but uh, so, so I, I don't think this is exactly reflective of the overall participation rates at all, but I hope that the overall effects are very similar. The Respondents distributed themselves this way. A lot of what we could call serious age groupers who are training you know, significant volumes each week and they have competitions that they train for. Some recreational athletes, about a third, but also even some university scholarship athletes and professional uh, contract professionals uh, in, in cycling and so forth that, that also answered the survey. Overall age distribution, well, it's all over the place. That's pretty nice. Everything from teenagers up to 85, 86 years old. But the, the mean age was 42 with a big distribution or a, a big standard deviation. So the main questions we wanted to get at were, uh, one, if you're forced inside, how has that changed training modality? Obviously, some things are going to be a lot tougher to do indoors. If, you, if you're a swimmer, you're pretty much locked out of the water. Uh, training volume, how has that changed? Are the, are the low intensity sessions getting shorter indoors? It's, you know, a lot of people say, ah, there's no way in heck I can sit on a bicycle for four hours indoors. And then of course, are we changing the intensity of the sessions? If they're getting shorter, are they also getting more intense? Are we doing more high intensity training? Or is the competition schedule and, and the fact that we don't have all these uh, events to peak for, perhaps that means we do less of that. So this was the sample in terms of sports modality, the primary sport, as I asked. Uh, cyclists, triathletes together make up about two thirds of the sample. And then you have runners of various specialties uh, and even some, a fairly good portion of rowers. Uh, not too many swimmers. And when they go indoors, this picture becomes this picture because cycling is kind of the most convenient, most likely ergometer you're going to be able to get your hands on. Uh, so eight out of 10 of the respondents are primarily just using a, a bike right now, a trainer. And they are setting up various kinds of so-called pain caves 
uh, for doing this. Everything from extremely sophisticated, this is just almost too nice to be classified as a cave of any kind, to very, you know, provisional, taking over the daughter's playroom, uh, using the ironing board. This is a professional cyclist who may have, for the first time, discovered that ironing boards can be used for something during the season uh, in the kitchen. So everybody's doing the best they can to find a place to train where there's some decent ventilation so they can get some air and so forth. Weekly training volume. Well, here is the distribution. This question was as it was categorical so people had to choose between a typical weekly training volume of one to three hours four to seven and so forth uh, so the mean I've kind of fudged by taking the midpoint of, of each of these and weighting them according to sample to get an idea of what the mean shift is but basically you see um, a bit of a change a bit of a drop in, in volume on average maybe from say 10 to eight and a half nine hours a week so not a big overall change but but at the individual level some very big changes individually some have gone up and some uh, may, more have have decreased their overall volume and if we look at that if we look at the direction of change in volume and look at you know how many of the respondents said well i'm in the same category about 45% had an unchanged volume. About 40, 38, 40% have decreased their training volume since the push indoors and, and the loss of competitions. And about 15% have actually increased the volume. Maybe they are uh, unfortunately not working or, you know, or have more time because they're working at home. That's a good thing, but they are actually able to increase their training volume. Now, the, what about the longest weekly training session? That's usually one of the marquees of the training organization is what's, what's the long, how long is the long run, the long ride, and so forth. Um, and in general, what we see is those long, low-intensity sessions have gotten shorter. And particularly if, if athletes were doing the really long stuff, like here we saw before, it was very common among the group to do three- and four-hour rides, and then you've got some that are doing even longer most of that has disappeared uh, and, and the rides have gotten shorter or the long rides have moved kind of into this this a bit shorter category for a lot of athletes and again if you look at what percentage has stayed the same what percentage are saying i'm actually doing longer long rides there's very few of those but there's a, a big chunk that say now my longest rides have gotten shorter And then there's this issue of, of high intensity training. Uh, now, this can go different ways. Obviously, I, I've even recommended that if you've lost, if you've dropped your competition schedule now and, and you need to kind of move into a uh, sustainable modus uh, of training and just kind of wait to see when the peaks need to be uh, planned for again, then it's not it makes good sense it's it's not a bad idea to maybe reduce some of the high intensity work and overall there's been a tendency to see that that's what's actually happening uh, there's a bit of a shift in the distribution towards fewer um, low intensity or fewer high intensity sessions but it's it's small overall and again you also have some that are probably doing more high intensity because they don't want to do the long stuff and they they want to race on Zwift and get out some you know blow off some steam and stuff so it, it has gone a bit both directions so the overall COVID-19 effect on our endurance training with with these important physical distancing measures and the competition you know the wipeout of the whole season one is you know there's been a huge increase in the use of cycling indoors as a substitute for normal uh, endurance training uh, a lot of people that's been their only alternative uh, so that has been very clear uh, variable effects on training volume so far uh, those the people who are doing the really big volumes have probably eased off a bit uh, but the really time crunched athletes may actually some of them be a, may be training more right now uh, the longest training sessions have gotten shorter on average 
um, there's been a small reduction in the frequency of high intensity type interval training um, that makes sense from uh, you know from a perspective of kind of trying to find us a, a, a coasting or, or a maintenance level of training as we wait for the season to kick back in again and then I guess the final thing would be Zwift and those kinds of, uh, you know, online gaming, gamification type uh, applications. They must be making a killing because there is a huge increase in the number of people who are using these right now. So uh, there, if, if there's not too many types of business that are doing better right now, but that is one of them. Anyway, that's the news from Norway and from my little, uh, I can't really call it a pain cave. I guess you'd have to call it the pain corner under the stairs uh, here in Norway. Trying to hang on to the, the end of the group as best I can. Stay healthy. Take care.